Coming up today on That LTD Life, let's talk about mobile apps. Now, building a mobile app can cost you tens of thousands of dollars, even into six figures and beyond, if you go the route of hiring a custom developer to do everything for you. So what if you're a mom and pop shop or just trying to test a brand new idea? There's gotta be a more affordable option. And there is, it's called Moby Roller, a new lifetime deal over at AppSumo. My name is Dave and I review lifetime deals Monday through Friday, every weekday. If you're interested in growing an online business without having those hefty monthly expenses, you are in the right place make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single ltd review now i'm going to be reviewing moby roller throughout the rest of this video so you can figure out if it's a good fit for your online business i'm going to tell you what i like what i dislike in the end it's up to you to decide if it's a good fit this video is sponsored by AppSumo, the place where you can actually go to buy the lifetime deal for moby roller but moby roller themselves do not know that i'm making this video i'm going to be giving you my honest takes on exactly what i think if you want to support my content so i can make more reviews like like this every day of the week, make sure you're clicking on my AppSumo link below before we're making a purchase over at the marketplace. Let's just take a quick look at the AppSumo deal page before we jump over into the Moby Roller application. Just a few things you need to know. First of all, Moby Roller is available as a plus exclusive for about three more days as of the recording of this video. All that means is you need to be an AppSumo Plus member, their version of Amazon Prime, in order to make a purchase. You will get 10% off of the purchase price if you're a Plus member. And after it goes general availability in three days, the price generally increases. So the savings actually compound here a bit. Then the only other thing to look at are the plans. And there are five different license tiers available. And nice to say that all of the features are included in all of the plans. Your only limitations are how many apps you create. So on tier one, we're gonna get 10 apps. And if you go all the way up to tier five, maybe you're a service provider, you're building apps for other companies, you can create unlimited apps. All right, so this is what Moby Roller looks like. It is a no-code mobile app builder. So obviously it's gonna be able to do a lot of things for people that they might not be able to do on their own, but there's also gonna be some limitations because it's for non-coders. A custom developer can build anything that you can imagine. Moby Roller is gonna ask you to kind of stay within their lane and only do the features that they support. So let's find out exactly how this works by creating a new app right up here. I wanna point out that I am using AppSumo's tier one plan 79 bucks to make this video it lets me create up to 10 different applications so i've got two different choices here i've got the classic app and i've got a blank app if i go with the classic choice well by the way there is generate by ai which is coming soon not available right now so if i go with the classic app they're just going to ask me to give it a name i'll just call it app sumo for the sake of this video then it's going to ask me to choose one of their templates and i will say i think their templates are kind of the weakest part of this entire experience they are all extremely ugly. They all put uh, this weird avatar at the top of every page. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. They do categorize them so we can see shopping apps and education apps and fashion apps. Some of them slightly better than others, but all of them kind of look like a dated Android app in my opinion. So what can we do here? We can cancel out of this. And when we create an app, we can actually make a blank app, which I'm kind of a fan of. I'm gonna call my app the LTD Finder and I'll hit next and hit let's build. And it says, buckle up, your app is creating. We're hard at work building your incredible app. I don't think anyone's actually behind the scenes doing any development here. It's probably just running a script in the background, but in a few moments, we will have an app that we can work with. All right, that just took a few seconds. Let's go ahead and explore the app. So here is the dashboard for our application. And the first place we are going to begin working is in the design tab over here to the left. Now, before we get too deep into this, I'm gonna point out kind of a cool feature that they have. If you don't like the layout over here, you can actually change how you're using the app builder itself. There's a gear icon, and then we've got the different layouts over here. Like maybe you prefer material design. I can choose that. And if I click away, you can see now we have a more material design type of aesthetic. Now, all of our menu options are still here. They're just on the top rather than on the side. So if I wanted to see my dashboard, I can go to the design options and they're right here. Personally, I find that to be a little bit more cumbersome because now I'm making extra clicks into getting into all the settings. But if you want the app to feel a certain way, at least they do give you some options for that. I'm gonna go back to the default view just for consistency and basically what you'll experience when you log into the app for the first time. All right, so as I was saying, we are going to begin in the design settings over here. I can go to the app name and icon and upload my icon right here. I'll choose upload an image. 
and I've uploaded my LTD life icon. I'm gonna zoom out there in the cropping and hit save. And it does give us a little preview of what it might look like on a home screen. It does bother me slightly that the font is so large here compared to, you know, obviously the screenshot that they have in the background. They should be able to match that and just make it blend in a little bit more since you're doing a preview. But uh, I'll let that slide for now. We'll go ahead and hit save. It's gonna take a moment here because it's basically going to add this into our code base, right? So I'm saying, yes, I'm sure it's gonna essentially just regenerate all of the code for the application. It does take a decent amount of time, I'd say like 20 seconds or so, which adds up if you're making several changes throughout the application. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's look at some of the other design options before we actually add some content into our application. So the next option down is the splash screen, which is the thing the user sees right after they launch the app. So it's got kind of an ugly splash screen here by default. So I can upload my own right here. I'm just going to use a custom image, basically just a gradient that I grabbed. All right, so here is my gradient. I'm gonna zoom it out again and hit save. And you can see this is what the splash screen will look like going forward. So let's save this. All right, it has successfully updated. And at any point, I can see what my application looks like by clicking on the preview button over here. Now, obviously, I have not added any content to the app, so we're not gonna see a whole lot. But if I hit this tap to play button, it's gonna launch my app, and I should just see that splash screen momentarily before it goes into the menu, which is going to be blank. So there's our splash screen, it is still loading. And then it says, I don't have any content. We will fix that momentarily. The next design option is our background images. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit start design here. And I'm gonna choose one of their options so that we can very distinctly see when the splash screen goes away and we see a different uh, background image. So I'll just go with this wood grain look right here. That's just fine. I don't love it, but we'll hit save for now. So this is our default background image. We can also have a list item background image over here. There is a tab at the top. As soon as this saves, I'll be able to show you that. So here is our list item background image. So if we have a list of different menus to choose from, we could add a background to this as well. I'm gonna leave it as is for default, but just know that this is an option. There's options for the design of a lot of the elements you see inside of the app, but it might be a little bit tricky to figure out exactly where to go inside of the menu in order to get them to be exactly as you want. I wish everything was a little bit more cohesive in terms of the design options, where maybe they just gave me one big Big screen and I can kind of see a preview and click and choose my different options as I go through it. But I do understand that building a mobile application is pretty complex. So that might be easier for me to anticipate that it would be than it is to actually execute. In any regard, I'm looking at the loading animations right here. So I can choose any of the different loading animations that I like. Notice that it does not have the color that you see in the preview. It's actually going to be set over here where it says app colors. Let's click on that. And if I scroll down to the the bottom, there is a loading animation color. Now, since I've got this darker background, I will choose a lighter loading animation. There we go. I've got a nice white loading animation now. I think that looks a lot better. We'll save that. The other options for colors here are navigation bar color, text color, and list item text color. Now, as you're building your app, if you end up having regrets that you chose the blank app and you wanna go ahead and choose a template, there is an option for that as well. You'll see all of the exact same templates that I passed on earlier in this video. And the last design option down here are your menu templates, where you can essentially choose what type of grid of icons you want to see, whether you have big icons, small icons, lots of icons, just a few icons, that is up to you to pick and choose from. You can set a background for the menu. So let me go ahead and just pick one here from their library. I will choose a different one. I'm not going for a beautiful look right now. I'm mostly just trying to show you where the different background images are displayed as we preview the app. So let's go ahead and hit save here. We now have three different backgrounds, right? We've got our splash screen, we've got our default background, and we also have our menu background. In order to see what these look like, we need to take the next step, which is to add in some content. That is easily done right over here where it says content, and we're gonna get a list of modules that we can simply add into our application. You wanna embed your website, very easy to do so. You wanna add your own custom HTML screen, you can do that. 
connect up your Shopify store, or even have an IPTV connection so people can watch your live streams right inside of your app. Very easy to do so. Now, one thing that I don't like so much about this approach is that they're, and this is a very small nitpicky thing, they're basically just connecting up to existing services, which is a great way to do it. I mean, if they had to, let's say, reinvent appointment booking, that's an entire business of itself. But why don't they just say here, this is a Calendly integration. Why don't they just say, integrate with Calendly or something like that? Instead, I have to add the app and then discover that this is a Calendly integration right here. Just a rather strange way of going about it, in my opinion. Like you might be thinking, e-commerce pro, that sounds great. I'd like to add that into my app. Oh, it's actually an app called Shopify Roller, which I can imagine Moby Roller, Shopy Roller, they're probably from the same company. Why not say Shopy Roller integration right here? They did it with Shopify. Again, nitpicking, but it does mean that I'm gonna go through and click a lot of these to find the one that I want. Like forms, what type of form integration do they have? Well, they actually have their own form builder, which is great. I think that makes a lot of sense, a lot easier to build out forms than it is something like appointment booking. So if I wanna have a contact form or something along those lines, there are a bunch of different elements here that I can easily add into my application. Let's just scroll through and look at some of the other content options and then I'll add some stuff into my app. So there's a product catalog where you can just basically add in pictures and descriptions from your existing e-commerce store if you don't wanna link up like a shop site. We've also got news and announcements for doing notifications. This is going to be an RSS feed. So if you want to link up to an RSS feed, maybe like a, a news feed on your website, you can connect that up and it'll show up inside of the application. We can do maps, we can do phone calls, SoundCloud, radio broadcasts, live TV. You can even create a to-do list or have an inbox so people can receive incoming messages. Yeah, there's just a ton of built-in features here. We've got favoriting. So so if people are browsing on your app, they can go ahead and favorite things. Here's a call now button. I mentioned that a moment ago. So yeah, a, a lot of great modules that I think small business owners particularly are going to appreciate. So let's get started by just adding our website. I'm gonna hit add app and I'll give it a title. I'm just gonna call it client amp. That is the name of our website here. So let's go ahead and type in clientamp.com. And then I can show the loading animation and display it on the toolbar. Let's go ahead and save those options. Oh, one thing I forgot to do before I hit save is I need to give it a menu image. So if you really wanna make your app look very custom, even though it's not, you can add your own menu images that maybe you hire a designer to create. Otherwise, they do have a small library, a very small library of icons to choose from. So here we go. They look very, very generic. And honestly, I think this would be the biggest upgrade is if you get another library of icons or hire someone to do custom icons for your app. It'll really make it look a lot better. But I'll just choose this globe icon for our website. Go ahead and hit save. And you know what? This is actually a little bug where I've already left the, uh, the, the builder Part, but the just modal still shows up. So what I need to do is go back in, hit edit, and now pick my, my menu image as soon as this loads. All right, there we go. I've got my item added and I can go ahead and hit save. And now we can see the app content that we've added over here. So I've got the website added. And if I preview my app, I should finally be able to see some content as I load it up. We'll see the splash screen, that kind of uh, pinkish white gradient. There we go, bluish to pink, I suppose. We've got our loading screen here. Remember that is white because that's the color that I set. Now we've got the menu background with the icon down here. And if I click this, it's actually going to load the website up and it does work pretty well here. So here is the website and I can simply click back out to get to the main menu. Now, what about like this chat right here? How does that work? Well, if I add it to the app, I can just give it a title. That's literally all I can do. I'll call it chat. But you might notice that, oh, I forgot to choose a menu item again. They should really require that before you hit save. Now, you might notice that when I open up the preview again, chat will not display. And on my first go around using this application, I found that to be a little bit confusing, but it's actually fairly simple to explain. All that you need to do is go under your settings here. It's actually under app login slash register, and then go to basic configurations, and you need to enable login in order for chat to work. So if I turn this on, I can also turn on Google sign in, enable registration, and activate the chat feature. Very important for chat to work. Go ahead and hit save. I did not turn on Google sign in because I'd have to enter in an API key at that point, and I'm just not interested in doing that right now. So let's go ahead and preview this. We should see chat displaying as well as our website in the menu. And there we go, we've got the chat. Now this does not work in preview mode, so we'd have to actually download the files for this and then test it out on our real 
your phone in order to see it in progress. By the way, now that we've turned on logging in, you're gonna to need to know more about those settings. Right over here under app login slash registration, we can go ahead and see the required screens. We can design the login page, choose the profile elements that are requested, do some member management if we need to remove somebody or add someone in manually. And we can also choose different system roles and chat roles as well. Now there's obviously a lot of different options here in terms of the content that you can add into your application. But remember, it's not gonna be like building a custom game or your own social media platform. It's really gonna be linking up to other services that you already utilize and making it easier for your customers to be able to interact with your business, which is the end goal of an app like Moby Roller. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of benefits to having a mobile app versus just relying on your website or God forbid your social media in order to contact your customers. Like we can do advertisements right inside of the application. There are iOS and Android integrations with AdMob so we can display ads and actually make some money from our app. We can also do in-app purchases if you have some content that you want to charge for, you can go ahead and set up a Google Play license key and then protect content so that people need to pay to unlock it. There's also push notifications, which means you can contact your customers right from their lock screen. They'll get a message from your business. Now to set this up, you just go under push notifications here and add a new notification. Note that you will need to actually create a build for iOS or Android in order to do so, so that you get the proper credentials in order to send out the push notifications. To do the build, you just go right to your dashboard screen and then either build for Android or build for iOS or both. Now you will need a Google Play developer account as well as an Apple App Store developer account in order to publish your applications on each respective platform. There is a small fee attached to becoming an Apple App Store developer. It is a yearly fee, but know that it's a lot smaller than hiring a custom developer. If all this sounds good, but you know what, you still can't be bothered, they do actually have these optional services here where you can pay less than a custom developer, but certainly more than an LTD to build and upload your app for you, do the design and even upload to the store. So that is an option for those out there that have more money than time. Heck, they'll even do your app store screenshot design in order to entice people to download your application. Only 200 bucks. Now, obviously I've not tried any of these optional services. So if you have, definitely leave me a message down below and let me know how it went, whether it was worthwhile or not. So that is Moby Roller. Certainly a lot more economical way to build a mobile app versus custom development. I could see this tool being most utilized actually by local service providers where you wanna have repeat customers like a handyman or a window washer. You can have people download your app right as they are signing up for your service. And then the next time they need the service, they don't go back on Google and search for another provider. They simply go to the app they already have installed and you can have your Calendly link right there or a chat or something like that in order to get repeat booking. That would definitely be worth the price of admission right there. It would also be great for a Shopify store that wants to have their own mobile app, but isn't quite ready to take the full leap. So Moby Roller is good, but not great. If you wanna get something on the app store in a hurry and you don't have the budget to do anything custom, this is certainly an option to consider. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 6.8 out of 10. That's gonna do it for this video. If you liked the video, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. Drop me any of your questions down below. Even a message to say hi for the algorithm is greatly appreciated. My name is Dave and I'll be back on Monday with another LTD review.